since we've done one of these. And this was supposed to post Sunday, and now it's Monday, so sorry about that. All right, first question. I'm just going in order. I've got our little phone here, and we're just going to go in order from the top. I have been told that all goats are escape artists. Do you have a problem with your goats escaping from their fenced area? We have not had that problem, and I think it's because we did a lot of research. Wait, that's not thin. Just a second. I think it's because we did a lot of research and um, just looked into what kind of fencing we needed to keep them in, and then we bought that fencing. And so we don't. <laughs> you go to bed. <laughs> So we don't have a problem with our goats getting out. Next question. How many acres is your farm? What is some of the history of your farm? We have almost 20 acres of property and the majority of it is beautiful woods. So there's only four to five acres that are open and I say four to five because there's varying degrees of openness. There's actually a big pasture and then there's a semi wooded area and then there's areas that used to be pasture that actually are forested mostly but we're reclaiming them back to pasture some of the history of our homestead is this was a um, tobacco farm years ago <clears throat> as were most small farms tobacco in this whole end of the state in fact in the whole state but in the past in this end of the state was a primary cash crop for farmers. So they'd raise all their little crops. They'd have a cow, they'd have um, their garden and their field crops, and they would have tobacco. And it was a chunk of cash every year. So that's some of the history of it, or a big piece of the history of it. Um, we just own a very small piece of the original farm. Um, the family still owns the other pieces and we just bought one piece that one of the siblings but well, there's four siblings that own the original farm and we bought one piece from one sibling you guys need to get in bed how did we meet when did you know art was the one and vice versa well we actually did a whole video on that it's called when homesteaders what was it called it's like when two homesteaders fall in love or something like that. So I'll link that in, okay. I'll link that in below this video it's in the description time. and I'll link it here and I'll link it at the end of this video. Miss Grace has joined us for a second and she's about to go to bed. <laughs> Bye -bye. Bye. Justice is up too. Justice, you want to say hi? <laughs> Sweetie boy. So we can't answer every question. So my apologies if we miss your question. Um, <clears throat> there's just not enough time or we'll have like an hour long video. What animals are you thinking slash want to get in the near future? <clears throat> right now we are kind of maxed out just as to the hours we're spending every week um, on work on our homestead. We love, I would say we love every minute of it, but it's a lot right now. So even though one side of me wants to get a whole flock of geese to try to raise completely off of wild food, grass, and forging, and a small herd of pigs that will raise partially off of skim milk and whey from our cow, and also ducks and I think that's it. Those are the things I'd love to get, but um, I think realistically we're gonna probably hold off on getting animals right now. It's possible we'll get some pigs. I think that would be the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, but what we need to do first is downsize our chickens some, which it's awesome we're able to actually give chickens to people and we have blessed a couple people with chickens. We have some, we have to yet just actually deliver them. One more, yeah, so it'll be three different families. And that's so neat that we're able to do that. And it's so beneficial to us as well. We're downsizing our chicken flock. 
We're not gonna try to sell a bunch of eggs, we just wanna have enough eggs for ourselves and to give some away. And we're going to downsize the goat herd. When I can at some point. Get myself to do it. <laughs> I still want to fence the back pasture, put the goats out there, and actually let them graze the whole thing down over a couple months. So we'll see. The goats may play a real significant role in that before some of them go to wonderful homes. I think probably the bigger issue is um, the infrastructure. Um, walking outside and feeding animals and spending a little time with them doesn't take that much time, but putting the infrastructure in for new animals that's really the more challenging part of it all. And moving fences every day is a lot of work. And until we get more permanent fencing in the back pasture, we don't really want to add more work, <laughs> like moving fences. Will you ever get sheep? <clears throat> I'm not going to put that possibility completely out, but we will not get sheep soon. It's just a whole different beast. And... I don't think either of us really want sheep. No. I would love to have sheep. If I had sheep, I would want to raise them for meat. I think I could kill a sheep and eat it. No. Even though we don't really want to kill goats and eat them. And then the next question is, kids are off to bed. Next question. <laughs> They've been off to bed quite a few times. All right, this says, tell us more about your cow. First time milking a cow. What are your plans for milking once a day, twice? Calf sharing, we're getting close to adding a cow too. Um, we've, I've never milked a cow. I've only milked goats. Our plans, our plans for milking are um, once a day milking, we're gonna calf share. What animals do you think a new homesteader should start off with in order, like rabbits and cows? So my answer for this is that I think you should start with whatever you want to start with. And on one hand, it might seem a little foolish to jump straight to a cow, but I really think if you want to get a cow, if you're passionate about getting a cow, you should get a cow. Now, <clears throat> if you have never raised an animal other than a dog or a cat, it might be a good idea um, to do something smaller first, but I really am a strong believer that if you have a strong desire to have a cow or just go straight to goats or um, <clears throat> something else that you should just do that and don't don't limit yourself at all just go for it and also it's a function of what's gonna fit in your life what do you like why do you want animals in the first place if you want to provide your family with all of their milk and you want to say hey we're gonna do this for a year or two years or three years and go for a cow get a cow if you've got space for it what are we hoping to grow in our fall garden this year I hope everything but I always kind of bite off more than Arthur can chew and so um, yeah I'd like to put some lettuce and spinach and greens and um, radishes and turnips and beets and sugar snap peas or snow peas anything carrots galore because we eat so many carrots garlic onions yeah all the fall crops I'd like to put all the fall crops in for sure so Aaron Thompson asked a question and said basically is it possible to have a job and maintain and develop a homestead. And I guess I'd kind of turn that question around and say, is it possible to not have a job and have a homestead? <laughs> I mean, even if you look at most farmers, or I would say many farmers, who they call themselves farmers, they're farming families, they raise significant amount of production crops. Most of them have other jobs these days. There's definitely exceptions to that, and there's whole areas where people farm full time. But there's, around here, I would say most people who are farmers have other jobs. A generation back, that might not be as true. So yeah, I think it's possible to have a job and maintain a homestead. It, um, it's, it's challenging, but if your passion is homesteading, I think you're gonna find a way to make the hours to do what you need to do. Um, to maintain your homestead. I'm a 
large proponent and practitioner of building home-based businesses that can integrate with your homestead passion and can fund your life. And that's what we're doing with this YouTube channel. And it's, I would say it's been a large success. Um, we are supplementing my nursing income with YouTube income and with y'all's support, we're actually able to not only spend time doing the homesteading things we want to do and invest some money in them, but also spread our passion for homesteading. So it's been a really neat combination working uh, with homesteading and YouTube. Will you shut the baby's door so that we can wake him up? How long after we moved in did we start homesteading? Did we know right away that we wanted to do it? Yes, we bought this place knowing that that's exactly what we wanted to do. Or I should say, we bought our place knowing that we could do whatever we wanted to here and that's what was most exciting to us. We could just mow the grass or we could have a cow. We could, you know, utilize the forest and do some selective logging. We could open up other pastures. We could you know, use the barn as an event center. There were just so many endless options for us in this place. And we had been dabbling in homesteading our whole entire marriage, always having had chickens and a garden and sometimes pigs and even a few ducks. So <clears throat> yes, the answer is yes. We did know that that's what we wanted to do. We waited a year, um, pretty much a year almost a year after moving in before we did anything. But the main reason for that for us was that we had our fourth baby nine days after we moved in. And I just needed to just do that for a season. I'm gonna answer two questions really quick. Are we still milking the goats? No, I stopped milking them in order to spend that time that I was spending with the goats to spend it with Dolly, our milk cow, so that I could just get to know her, get comfortable with her, and her get to know me and get comfortable with me. Because my the, my time in the morning is very limited, and so I had to cut something out. I do still spend a lot of time with the goats, though. So just not milking them. And then the other question is, is do we still have all the jars of food under our house and our root cellar? Uh -huh. I think we should have a meetup, and everyone has to commit to emptying 100 jars. I don't answer four questions back to back. Are you going to plant rhubarb in your homestead? We already have rhubarb out there actually right now. They're, they're doing really good. Yeah. We won't, we won't cut any this year, but maybe next. Um, what do you feed your goats? Right now, our goats are just eating grass. None of them are being milked right now. They eat grass and whatever else they find. Are we getting guard geese for our other chickens? No, not right now. We love Donald. He is a character and he's added a ton to our homestead, and I do think he functions as a guard goose, but he's also kind of violent towards the chickens sometimes. I think less, actually, recently. Just during the spring, it seemed like. Yeah, he it was, like he's chilled out He now. injured some of the chickens in the spring, and we're so we're just kind of trying to figure, feel that out, figure that out, um, and learn more about that before we assign more guard geese to more chickens. Well, plus, we'll be integrating the pullets with the mature hens soon. And so, I mean, they'll all have a guard goose already. They'll have Donald. True. Another question, what's the long-term plan for our farm buildings? Will we repair rotted wood or uh, stain them? I don't think I'm gonna stain the barns. There's a lot of controversy on this topic, actually. A lot of people say if you paint a barn, it actually will rot faster. To my understanding, none of these barns have ever been painted or stained, ever. And they've lasted extremely well. Um, the other part of the question was about replacing roofs, and that is um, very insightful because, yeah, that's the roof is the key to keeping the barn in shape. None of the roofs need replacing. There's one, there's three spots that need repair, and then all of them will eventually, their metal roofs will need like a roof coating. But overall, they're, the roofs are in great shape. Just a couple dripping leaks. Someone wants to know what's the story on our quilts. Ah, uh, here's the quilt. I have quilts, kind of, you can see that one a little, all over the house. Um, and they want to know, is there a quilter in my family? Did they come with the house or did I make them? So, 
my great grandmother was a quilter so I have actually a quilt from my great grandmother but I actually don't have it out because my mom would be devastated <laughs> so I actually keep that put away um, my quilts came from eBay so I got tired of having a romantic story or I got tired of waiting to have a romantic story behind quilts because I was like if I keep waiting I'm never gonna get amazing quilts and um, so I just bought some off of eBay for 50 bucks they were all about $50 <laughs> I actually um, used to sew a lot and made Arthur quilt when we were still dating and hopefully one day I will be a quilter so. oh and I've made Grace Grace I made Grace a quilt when she was a baby can you eat goats and if so would you ever consider eating yours no we generally no I don't have that much of a problem with it. I think I could probably do it right now without feeling bad. But there's a lot of love and connection to the goats we own. And we've realized that they're kind of more similar to dogs mm -hmm. than they are to chickens or, I hope I don't hurt anyone's feelings too bad, sheep in my experience. Or cows. Maybe. I could not <laughs> eat Dolly. <laughs> uh, so we're not going to eat our goats. So, you can eat goats. I actually love goat meat, and I was really excited about raising goat meat, but it's not going to happen. Like, you just, there's way too much uh, connection. If it came down to it and we were hungry, we would not hesitate to eat them. We they would, would go right after the chickens. We would hesitate, but we would do it to save our lives. So, we the, the question is, what are we going to do with all the empty space in our farm? Multiple answers. One, it's nice to have some empty spots. Two, we're going to fill in with a lot of fruit trees and, um, herbs. and herbs and perennial gardens over yeah. the years. Three, we're going to plant some trees and bushes in our yard to try yeah, to cut down on mowing. There's a cat in the house. It came in the window. <laughs> the one window in our house without a screen. And um, It's because I haven't fed her yet. But that'll all develop over time. And then there's a whole mountain of woods that I think is productive, even... Just in its beauty, so. Yes, and for the buffer and the watershed. Correct. Yeah. How often do we water the vegetable garden? Basically never. Never. It's raining outside right now. We have watered some, especially when the seeds were germinating, and the kids sometimes water just for fun. I would say though, there's never been a point that we had to water our garden this year. Some years, you do have to water if you want to have any production in a vegetable garden in this area. But so far this year, it's rained frequently enough. Um, it's not been a problem. Quite a few people have asked me what my canning goals are this year, or more specifically, what will I be canning, what will I be freezing? Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure yet because one, well, I actually don't know how to use a pressure canner. I've never used one, so that's quite intimidating. Um, I also prefer frozen. I like things frozen way more than I like them canned. But I realize the benefit of learning um, all the ins and outs and complexities of canning so that, you know, if electricity was out. Okay, get some water. <laughs> you know, so if electricity goes out, you don't lose your entire harvest. Um, I don't actually have a pressure canner though and they're pretty expensive so we'll just see. I do have um, a water bath canner so probably I'll be canning tomatoes but we'll just see. We'll just see what happens. Um, I was just thinking today of buying a bunch of peaches and canning them because so, there's a lot of roadside stands right now with peaches. Another question is, was living on a homestead our, our lifelong dream? Or did it happen after you two got married? It definitely happened for me after we got married. I definitely never had any ambitions whatsoever to be a homesteader. Um, I mean, I definitely thought outside the box in what I wanted to do with my life, but I did a lot of traveling before I met Arthur. I did a lot of like social work kind of things, um, mission work. Uh, I was a doula up, I mean, I guess I'm still technically a doula. I just haven't been any Bristol in a while because I have four little kids and I live really far away from everyone I know. 
Um, but when we got married, his family's lifestyle really opened my eyes to the possibilities of what you could do on your own land. With, and it really doesn't even take all that much. Um, I don't know, it's, it's just not as hard, I think, as we've been led to believe it is to grow some food. I think being totally or mostly self-sustainable is very challenging, but growing some food isn't, isn't that hard. Did we use a realty company to find our homestead? No. Arthur found it. But we did use a realtor to buy our homestead. What are our religious affiliations? We're Christians. I heard you say Art is six foot six. You don't look a lot shorter than he is. Bree, how tall are you? I'm not six foot he's six. He's six three. I don't know why you thought that. I'm five four and he's six three. Will you ever get another vacation with having the homestead? That, that's a two-part question. I'll just answer this. Yes, we're going to get a vacation. I'm a strong believer that you can have a vacation and my view of it we haven't achieved this yet but i think we've achieved part of it is if you build personal connections with a lot of people you can actually do anything so an example would be someone who uh, we know who comes out they pick vegetables in our garden they help us milk our animals um, they are really involved with what we're doing it might be someone who we would who would want to come out and stay. So I really think if you have the right personal connections, you can go on a vacation as a homesteader, even if you're milking a cow. We haven't found those people yet, but we, we oh, will. I don't think so. I think we, I think we could. Yeah. Like, I think another really great resource is homeschool kids. Um, their parents are always looking for really neat opportunities for them. And they, it's not like they have school and after school activities to content, to contend with. So, um, I think you would need to pay them, but I actually have homeschoolers help me now, like around my house and in the yard, and they're younger, so you're not paying like professional prices for the help. You're paying teenage prices for the help, which is way more affordable. Yeah. And I think we do know some people that would help us, maybe not for like a whole week, but for like three days or something. Because really the issue isn't that they didn't want to help. It's that they would have to drive so far to get here. How many hours a week does Arthur work? 40. Someone says that I seem sweet with my children always. What's my best advice about raising kids? Any more human kids in the future? Um, this is always so challenging for me because I am a very imperfect mother just like every single one of you out there that's a mom and my kids would be the first ones to tell you what my faults are and they would also be the first ones to tell you what my strengths are and um, it's always very very humbling when people say you're so sweet you're such a good mom you're the perfect mom I have so many areas of my heart and of my um, Self that need a great deal of dying <laughs> dying to myself and yeah so I'm not sweet with my kids all the time I really wish I was I really wish I was um, and then the other question was what's my number one advice what's my best advice about raising human kids here's the thing that nobody told me when I was pregnant with my first child. And what I never heard until I had my own child and experienced it. And it's this. Basically, what I always heard was the negative, how hard it is, how exhausting it is, how messy it is, how unrewarding it is, how un unthinkful, and it's not unrewarding, but unthinkful. And, um, and all that stuff's true but the thing about having a child or children is that there's this great, incredible amount of love and fun and joy that drives you. And you don't, always, you don't have that when people are just telling you about all the hard things. So that's not happening inside of you yet. And so 
when your children come, that happens. And I know for some people it doesn't happen until their first child is actually born. I know that I was just terrified until Grace was born. And once she was born, that happened in me. And um, I just remember thinking for, for just years afterwards, why didn't anyone tell me? Do you remember me saying that all the time? Nobody told me how how my, how awesome this is. All I ever remember hearing was how awful it was. And um, and so my best advice to you would be not to be afraid to have children because it is the best thing that will ever happen to you. Even though it's really really hard <laughs> every day. It's not, the kids aren't the hard thing. It's your own self. That's the hard thing. Should we end there? If you want to be perfect parents like us, just to, you need some good editing software. That's <laughs> <laughs> all you need. 20 bucks a month to Adobe. We don't actually edit out that much stuff, but we're obviously not going to like put in our worst stuff. I mean, it's not like we like... Or when our kids are acting crazy, like we're not going to put that in there because that can embarrass them later on. Agreed. Yeah. But all around, we have uh, awesome kids. We have kids, we have amazing children. And it was really fun. We really appreciate the questions. And apologies again to people we didn't answer their questions. Um, we got to a lot of them. I don't know how we're going to make it in the final cut. Never know. But thank you all. Thank you so much for being our loyal viewers. And um, we'll see you in the next video. So stick around. It's going to be fun.